Hey guys, this is Adam with TAT Express, and today we're gonna go over a DOT inspection. This is the inspection that you would get if you get uh, if you go to a shop and you need an inspection. This is the exact inspection you're gonna be getting. So what I would do, what I would recommend you do, is uh, at least once a week check your truck out, and the same procedures that we're doing to avoid any kind of downtime uh, from an inspection on the side of the road. Uh, if this video has helped you uh, if in any way, please leave us a like and make sure to subscribe uh, and hit that notification bell so you know next time we release another video. Uh, if you got any questions about this inspection, leave us a comment below or you can email us at info at TATExpressInc.com. Let's get right into this video. So the first thing you wanna do during this inspection is make sure your truck is charged up with air. Uh, the way you can tell is you leave your truck running until you hear your compressor purge. Uh, again, these inspections are gonna be done annually and this is what's gonna, this is the type of inspection you're gonna receive on a, uh, on a roadside. Uh, like I said, this is a federal inspection, DOT inspection. So it's gonna be the same uh, across the United States. Okay, so the first section we're gonna look at here is the brakes. Okay, the brakes are very important for this particular vehicle. All brakes are important, especially commercial vehicles. Since commercial vehicles are being ran off of air brakes, uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is make sure that his brakes are working correctly. Okay, right now I have the vehicle chalked, as you can see, uh, and the way that I'm gonna look for a leak, uh, basically, when I, ask, when I say leak, I mean air leak. Uh, these systems are being ran by uh, air, so if the, it's a, basically a closed circuit, so there shouldn't be any air. Uh, any audible air uh, leaks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna release the parking brake, uh, which is going to supply air to the brake chambers and release the brakes. And then I'm gonna apply the foot brake and I'm gonna listen for any audible leaks. Once I release the brakes, I can hear the air uh, initially release so that the uh, brake chambers can uh, be charged with air. Now I'm gonna, then I'm gonna go ahead and apply the brakes. So you hear an air leak there, so that's gonna tell you that that's gonna be a failure. I'm gonna go ahead and release the brakes. Now this particular truck has not is actually not in service, so we are gonna find some items, but that's good. This is the type of items that you're gonna be looking for. So we heard an audible air leak here in the front. Since I'm looking at this truck by myself, it's, um, it's gonna be uh, helpful if I have somebody apply the brakes or I can put a bar on the brakes. Uh, we know that the brake chamber over here on the driver's side is leaking. Um, and when I come to inspect the brake chamber, we're gonna run into an item that you're gonna be looking for, uh, for the brake tubing. Uh, as, as I mentioned, I'm looking at brakes. Uh, the, the first section of this inspection is gonna be brakes. This is gonna include brake hoses, brake tubing. Uh, this is gonna include the brake drums. Uh, if it has rotors, it's gonna, we're gonna be looking at rotors. We're gonna be looking at ABS lights. If you have any ABS lights on the dash, that's another indication that your brakes aren't working uh, correctly. And we're also gonna be measuring brake stroke. So uh, when we talk about brake hoses, if you can get a look at this hose here, you can see how this hose is routed. So this is the type of, uh, if you get a repair done, uh, if somebody's servicing your truck and you, and you, you see a hose like this, uh, you can, basically this, what happened here is, this, this needs to be turned uh, this is a 45 degree fitting, but it needs to be turned this way so you don't have this kind of bind. So what happens, the bind happened and now we got a hose leaking. Uh, so any kind of chafing like this, if against, if against any kind of a frame or anything like that, that's what you're gonna be looking for on your brake hoses. Okay, brakes are gonna be on each wheel. Uh, that particular brake chamber is gonna be a smaller brake chamber and it's for uh, service brakes only. Uh, the rear brakes are going to have parking brakes and service brakes. So let's move on to the back. So coming here to the back, uh, we did hear at, at this point, this truck is out of service. It's not going to pass, but we're going to continue with the inspection to see if there's anything else we can find uh, to re recommend any kind of services that are needed. So back here, I'm looking at the brake hoses as well. If uh, Let me see if I can get some hands on them. So this is one of the brake hoses here that you're looking at that goes down to this brake chamber. 
you can see that. And then there's your other brake chamber for that wheel. And you're looking at these hoses. You're following the hoses that are connected to that brake chamber, making sure they're routed correctly and they're, they're not chafing against anything, any frame, uh, any, any of the frame or anything like that. Um, up here on this axle, this would be axle number two. Uh, if you are getting written up for anything, they're gonna mention axle number one, two, and three. So checking axle number two is the same way. We're gonna look at brake hoses. We're gonna see how they're routed. We're gonna make sure that there's no binds, uh, incorrect installation, anything that could cause uh, air loss. Okay, brake chambers are gonna be on this axle here. Uh, just trying to see what I can do to get a good view for you. So we're on top of the truck right now uh, on the catwalk and I'm looking at the brake hoses here, here. I'm, following them down, following them down to the brake chambers as well. You can see the brake chambers down there, making sure we're not hitting anywhere on the frame here, anywhere. You're checking for hoses, checking, making sure for any chafing. Um, that's gonna be part of your checking your brake chambers back here as well. So we're staying on the brakes, we're moving right up to the front, checking the same thing on this front brake chamber. We're making sure the hoses are routed correctly. You can see how this hose is routed and you can see that there's no chafing, uh, no bindage. Hose is, is looking good right there. So that hose looks good there. Uh, we are gonna write this brake, brake tubing up for the driver's side. Uh, brake hose as well is gonna be. Uh... Okay guys, so the next thing we're gonna check is the front brake shoes and drum. This is the same inspection you're gonna do for the rear brake and drums. Uh, so what we're looking for is, if you look at this section here, this section here is the actual brake pad. This section here is the metal on the brake shoe. This is what holds the pad in place. And this is the brake drum. So what we're looking at, we're looking at the thickness of the brake pad. Uh, what we're gonna do, we're gonna take the measurement here at the, at the thickest point or the widest point. Uh, you wanna make sure that's more than a quarter inch thick. Uh, another thing we're gonna check is the brake drum. So for the brake drum, what you wanna do is you wanna follow the brake shoe until it opens up and you're gonna have a section where you're gonna be able to feel the actual surface of the drum. Uh, what we're looking for is a smooth surface. Uh, what you don't want is deep ridges in the drums or even a lip, uh, wear lip. If you have a real deep wear lip or real deep grooves in the drum, uh, that's gonna be uh, needing to be replaced. So as I mentioned, this test is the same test you're gonna do on the rear brakes. Also be careful when you're checking these brake drums. If it just got off the road, they could be hot. Okay guys, so we're moving right along. Another thing I'd like to mention on the brake shoes, when you're checking brake shoes, make sure they're not cracked or damaged or even oil soaked. If you do have oil soaked, uh, then that means you have a wheel seal leaking. Okay, so moving right along, we're gonna go ahead and mark the uh, brakes as uh, good for the brake shoes and drums here. Uh, I did mark a discrepancy for the brake hose that we found in the front and also for the service brake. Until we can get these repairs uh, completed, we won't be able to pass this truck. So uh, another thing I'd like to mention is gonna be the compressor, that's the next item. Uh, we already verified that the compressor is pumping air by uh, turning the truck on and making sure it's building up enough pressure. Uh, but another inspection, what we're going to be looking for is making sure that the compressor is mounted on securely. It's not loose. Uh, the way that you're going to be able to tell, uh, for example, this particular Volvo, the compressor is towards the back on the driver's side. So we're looking at the compressor. Uh, what I'm looking for, I'm looking for any oil leaks uh, where that compressor meets that housing, looking for any oil leaks, looking for uh, any way that that compressor may be coming loose. If I can get eyes on the bolts, we're looking at bolts. Most of the time, if a compressor is coming loose, you're gonna see a ton of, a pretty large oil leak around where that compressor is gonna be mounted. Uh, and other models are gonna have compressors uh, towards the front. Uh, so make sure you're, uh, you're looking at the right compressor or looking at the right area. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and mark this compressor as good. Uh, let's go ahead and move on inside the truck to check a couple items out inside. Okay guys, so we're inside the truck. We're gonna be checking for ABS faults. We're gonna be checking for a low pressure warning system and tractor protection valve. So the first item we're gonna be looking for is ABS faults. And the way we're gonna be looking at it is we're looking here on the dash, on the, on the control panel, and we should see a ABS fault if there is a ABS fault present. Uh, as you can see, there is a TC, TCS fault. Uh, that's considered part of the ABS system, so that's going to need to be written up. The next item we're going to do is we're going to release the brakes. 
Usually this test is done with the truck off, uh, but we're gonna make sure he has low pressure, a good low pressure warning system. So as I mentioned, this truck has a pretty large leak, so we should be able to see the warning. There we go. Last item we're gonna be looking for is making sure that tractor protection valve is gonna pop out once we lose pressure. We're waiting for this valve to pop out here. Okay, so the valve release, that's working correctly. So ABS is gonna be written up. Tractor protection valve is good. Uh, low pressure warning is good. Now we're gonna move over uh, checking out the slack adjusters. So let's move on outside. Okay, so now we're up under the truck and we're gonna make sure that the slack adjusters are working correctly. Uh, I'm using two people for this particular test. Right now I have the brakes released. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make my first mark on the, the shaft on the brake chamber here. Now I'm gonna have him hit the brakes and I'm gonna measure from the base of the brake chamber to see how long this brake, the actual brake distance or brake stroke is. Go ahead. So we got a brake supplied. I'm taking the measurement there and as you can see, we're around two inches. Um, okay. So Once you have the brake stroke measured, uh, you want to check out what type of brake chamber you have and you want to look up the maximum distance that this brake chamber is actually designed for. Now what this test does, we're making sure that this slack adjuster up here is working like it's supposed to. Basically as the brakes wear, that slack adjuster should be taking that brake, the brake play out of there. Uh, and that's so that you can have uh, the, the correct brake balance across the whole brake system. Okay, so we're moving right along on the inspection. The next item we're gonna check is a coupling device, which is gonna be the fifth wheel. Now, what we're looking for is the way that this fifth wheel is mounted and bolted onto this frame. We wanna make sure that there's no loose bolts around this, this bracket that's holding this fifth wheel on. Uh, we wanna make sure there's no rust bleeding uh, between the bolts. That's gonna be indication of movement, any of these bolts, any of these plates showing any kind of excessive rust, build, or excessive rust is gonna show that it's actually moving. We wanna make sure that the fifth wheel is secured on there, uh, make sure that it's not moving around. Uh, you can tell if, if items are moving, as I mentioned, by uh, bleeding rust. Uh, make sure you're checking both sides. Uh, same thing, we're checking the mounts, uh, we're checking all the fasteners, we're checking, uh, the, just making sure that this fifth wheel is secured on there uh, and not moving around. That's, this is where most of the weight's gonna be carried. Uh, so it's very important to make sure there's no movement back here. So everything looks good. Um, on, this particular, on this particular coupling device. The next item we're gonna move over to is the exhaust system. So let's move right on to that. Guys, so the next item we're gonna be inspecting is the exhaust system. The exhaust system is very important. We don't want any fumes going into the cab. Uh, exhaust fumes could be very dangerous. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna follow from the engine all the way back to the exhaust pipe. We're gonna look for any kind of black indication like soot, uh, any leak of uh, exhaust fumes There's going to show indications of black soot. Uh, there's not any uh, leaks on this particular truck, but what you're going to do is you're going to follow it all the way down. You're also going to be looking for uh, making sure that there's nothing resting on the exhaust system that could cause a fire. So if everything looks good there, uh, you should be, be, should be good to go on the inspection. So let's move right along to the next item, which is going to be the fuel system. Hey guys, so the next item we're going to be checking is the fuel system. Basically, we're going to be looking for any fuel leaks. Uh, we're looking at the fuel system. You can check where the fuel filter housings are. Uh, there's another fuel filter on the other side. We're looking for any fuel on the ground. If you see any fuel on the ground, that's indications that you have a fuel leak. Also, you want to make sure that you're not missing any fuel caps. So there are other items that we're looking for on the fuel system. So after all that's checked out, let's, uh, basically the next item is going to be the lighting system. The lighting system is pretty self-explanatory. Okay guys, so we have the truck started up. Basically all we're looking for is, of course, making sure all your blinkers are working, your headlights are working, your clearance lights, your tail lights, making sure all your lights are working correctly. Uh, that's an indication that everything's good. Uh, that's part of the inspection that we conduct as well. Okay guys, so the next item we're gonna be moving over to is gonna be the steering components. The way we're gonna check this, this is the steering shaft coming from the steering wheel down to the gearbox. Uh, the gearbox has a pitman arm behind it. Sometimes they're gonna be in the front and then there's gonna be a drag link that connects the actual spindle to the, uh, to the steering system. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna check to make sure there's no excessive play. And the way we're gonna do that is you have a universal joint here. Uh, we wanna rotate this steering wheel to see if there's any play in that universal joint. 
Uh, also, we're going to see how much play is happening uh, at the pitman arm and drag link. So we don't want uh, excessive play. Uh, like this area is, is minimal play there. Uh, when we're moving the steering, as I mentioned, when we're looking at the pitman arm, we're looking at the uh, where it connects to the spindle. We're seeing if there's any excessive play. Everything looks good with this one. Um, so we do see a little bit of indication that there's some oil leaking. Uh, since there's not, it's not making it on the floor, that's not going to be a write-up. So moving right along, uh, looking more at the steering system, of course, we look for a free play. Um, another item we're going to be checking for is the axle beam. If you look uh, back, if you look down at the bottom where the exhaust, or I'm sorry, where the uh, springs are and the U-bolts are that are connect the axle to the, to the spring, uh, we want to kind of look at the saddle, uh, the spring seat. Uh, we want to look around all that area to see if there's any movement. Uh, the way you're going to be able to see movement is, uh, as I mentioned before, you're going to look for a bleeding rust. If you see some rust that's been knocked loose and you're going to be able to see that there's movement going on down there, that's going to be an indication you have some movement. Uh, we've checked the gearbox, uh, as I mentioned. Uh, we looked at the pitman arm. The tie rod in uh, and the U-bolts, I'm sorry, the tie rod in and the drag link. We checked the drag link already. Uh, another, let me get down on under the truck and I'm gonna show you how we're testing the uh, tie rod. So let me move right over to that. Okay guys, so another part of the steering system is the tie rod ends. This inspection is gonna be done on both sides for the left and right tire. What we're looking for is play up and down play. Side to side play is okay. Up and down play is where you're gonna be having issues. So there's no up and down play. So we're good there. Another indication of a bad tie rod in is gonna be irregular tire wear. So this looks good. Let's move on to the next item. So taking a look at the front suspension, uh, the rust bleeding and the sections that you wanna look for rust bleeding is down here by the bolts, uh, on the U-bolts here, uh, down here by the spring seat and the spring saddle, uh, down here by this spring seat here, looking where the leaf spring meets uh, these, these other components here. You wanna look for any kind of rust bleeding around this area. If you see any rust around that area, bleeding rust, that's gonna be indication of movement. Hey guys, so we're moving right along. The next item is going to be uh, a section called safe loading. Basically what this is, is for example, if this truck, this truck has a spare tire rack, if it did have a spare tire on there, we want to make sure that that's uh, secured, uh, that it won't fall off. Also, any kind of battery covers, fairings, anything that looks loose, bumpers, that's going to be considered safe loading items. Uh, so since he doesn't have a spare or this truck doesn't have a spare, everything looks good. We're going to go ahead and check that off. The next, so the next item we're going to be checking is going to be the rear suspension. We've already checked the front suspension. Uh, we're checking the rear suspension now. We're going to start with the torque arms. Now there's going to be different designs, but if you're checking these bushings here, making sure this torque arm is intact, uh, everything looks good. Again, back to the rust bleeding. We're going to be looking for rust bleeding. Uh, if we're looking for the rear suspension, uh, if you look down now, each suspension is going to be different, but you basically want to look at for your leaf spring, where your U-bolt bolts your leaf spring down to the axle. You want to see where this, where the, where the saddle is, which is basically the spring seat. Uh, you want to look where the U-bolts bolts to the, to the spring. Make sure there's no bleeding rust in any of those areas. Any bleeding rust in that area is going to indication, uh, be an indication of excessive movement, and you're going to need to get that checked out. Uh, the next item on the same spring, we're going to check this on all four wheels, but where this spring is connecting actually to the frame of the truck, we're looking at the actual hanger, making sure again, no rust bleeding around the bolts. Also where the spring is meeting the hanger, uh, we're looking for any rust bleeding. This, this particular system has bushing, bushings here on the leaf spring, so we're checking inside those bushings, making sure they're not all rotted out and there's not any excessive movement. So as I mentioned, we're going to be checking that on all four tires. If everything looks good, then you can move on to the next item. So the next item we're going to be checking is going to be the rims. We want to make sure there's no cracks between uh, the fasteners here or any of the openings on the, on the wheels. We're going to be checking all the wheels all the way around, making sure there's not any uh, weld, welding on the wheels. That is not allowed on any other wheels. Any kind of repair on the wheels is not allowed. Any damage on the wheels or cracks, fractures, anything like that would be a fail. Another item we're going to be looking at is the frame. Uh, we want to make sure that there's not any welding, large welding repairs done on the frame. Uh, make sure that there's not, uh, make, like the components here that are in the front and the back, uh, major components of the subframes that they're not being moved. Uh, checking 
Again, where the fifth wheel is uh, meeting the frame here, we don't want any kind of major repairs, welds, anything like that. Uh, any, anything that's gonna be structurally repaired on this is what we're looking for. I know there's only so much you can see on the outside, but making sure that you look for any type of repairs or any welds on the frame or wheels, it would uh, be cause for a failure. So another item we're going to be checking for is, is uh, the tires. We're going to be inspecting all the tires all the way around, checking tire pressure. Make sure when you're checking tire pressure that the valve stem doesn't start to leak. Uh, making sure that the tire in the front or the steer are not running any recaps or not dry rotted or anything like that. A good uh, a way to inspect the tires as well is looking at how the dirt is sticking to the tires. You can see it's all evenly wore. Um, an indication of irregular wear is going to be, could be an indication of suspension wear, kingpin wear, or low tire, uh, low tire pressure. The same in the rear, we're checking the condition of the tires, making sure they're not dry rotted, make sure we're not missing any chunks, they're evenly wore. Uh, we're looking for signs of low, low air. Uh, by hitting the tire, you can tell over time uh, how, how much bounce the tire has, and then you could go ahead and check it for air to verify it. Uh, on the rear, I would recommend that you run tire tread depth more than 230 seconds and on the front I would recommend more than 330 seconds in the front. Uh, and making sure that on the steers when you're checking tread depth you want to check it at its lowest point. Uh, if you have a tire that's not evenly wore I would get that checked out. Uh, you want to check the tread depth uh, at its lowest point. If you have tread depth in the center of the tire but you don't have tread depths on the side that's going to be considered a violation as well. The last items we're going to be checking on the truck uh, it's going to have to do with the inside. The first thing we're going to be looking for is a fire extinguisher. Of course, this truck doesn't have a fire extinguisher, so this is going to get written up uh, here in the inspection. Uh, we're going to be checking the windshield. What we don't want is anything over a quarter, uh, the size of an actual quarter. We don't want any, any, any damage to the windshield, any cracks, chips that are larger than a quarter or obstructing the driver's view. Uh, another item is going to be the windshield wiper and washer fluid. Those items are very important, especially if a driver is getting caught uh, right in the middle of a storm and there's heavy rain and his wipers aren't working or they're not working correctly. He can be going down the road and not be able to see, so it's very dangerous. Uh, making sure your wipers are working correctly, your windshield, uh, your windshield washer fluid is being dispensed correctly, you don't have cracked windshields. Um, those are the items that we're going to be looking for. One of the last items we're going to be looking for is the driver's seat belt. We want to make sure that this seat belt is working correctly, uh, that it latches to the other side. Uh, what you, we don't want is a seat belt that's inoperable. It's very important that the drivers have the seat belts working correctly and that, that they're using it. There's times that a driver can get into a, a rough situation if they have to uh, swerve and uh, the driver can get just tossed around inside the truck. So keeping a seat belt on is very important. It keeps that driver in place in case of an emergency. Okay guys, so that's what you can expect during a DOT inspection. I'd like to comment to you that some inspectors are gonna be more lenient than others. So inspections could vary at different locations. So uh, keep that in mind. So I would, like I said, this is something that you should be you're looking over for yourself. It is gonna be required that you do this at least once a year. And also this is the type of inspection you're gonna get uh, during a roadside. So guys, I hope you learned something. Uh, if you did, if you got any questions or concerns and you wanna share your feedback, please leave it in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed to us yet, please subscribe to us. Also hit that notification bell if you haven't so you know next time we release another video. Uh, guys, until next time, be safe.